Welcome to the introductory course on the grade approach and summary of findings tables prepared and narrated by Nancy Santeso and Holger Schunemann at McMaster University in Hamilton, Canada. This module is part of a series of training modules that include an introduction to the grade approach and summary of findings tables, how to grade the quality of a body of evidence, focusing on the risk of bias, inconsistency, indirectness, imprecision, publication bias, and other factors that lead to upgrading the quality of evidence. It includes a module on choosing comparisons and outcomes, and how to use the grade profiler, also called grade pro. In the grade approach, studies are summarized in systematic reviews. They may provide a quantitative summary through a meta-analysis, or they may be described by a narrative summary. The important question is how one can interpret the results of such a summary. In particular, how confident we can be that the estimate of the observed effect from the summary is actually true. How confident can we be in this estimate? One of the questions that is asked according to the grade criteria is whether publication bias is likely. If publication bias is likely, our confidence in the estimate of effect may be reduced. For further information on this topic, please see Cochrane Handbook chapters 10 and 12. Publication bias leads to a systematic under or overestimate of the effect due to selective publication of studies. It is also known as the file drawer problem. It results from fast and multiple publication of positive trials and fewer and slower publication of negative trials. Trials that include a large number of patients are less likely to remain unpublished or ignored and tend to provide more precise estimates of the treatment effect, whether or not they are positive or negative. The risk of publication bias is probably higher for reviews that are based on small trials, as small negative trials are more likely to remain unpublished. Studies funded by for-profit organizations are more likely to have outcomes that favor the sponsor, and therefore it is possible that publication bias is more likely under those circumstances. In the great approach to assessing publication bias, the quality of a body of evidence for an outcome will be downgraded depending on the extent of the publication bias. Publication bias is either undetected or strongly suspected, which would lead to downgrading by one level. In very rare circumstances, one might downgrade by two levels. But how does publication bias affect the quality of the evidence? One of the ways to explore publication bias is through the use of funnel plots. A funnel plot shows the effect of an individual study, here represented by each single dot on the x-axis, plotted against a measure of precision on the y-axis. As a measure of precision, the standard error is frequently used. In earlier versions of the funnel plot, sample size has been frequently used. As a result of random distribution of individual study results, a funnel plot should be symmetrical around the summary estimate of effect. The smaller the study, or the less precise the studies are, the larger will be the spread around the best estimate or the summary estimate of effect. That is, the further down on the y-axis the dots are located, the wider may be the distribution. This results in an inverted funnel when there is an absence of publication bias. In this case, the best estimate of effect may be an odds ratio of 0.6 with studies effect measures symmetrically distributed around this best estimate of effect. Under such circumstances, one would not downgrade the quality of evidence. Now consider this example. A symmetric funnel plot indicating no effect. What frequently happens is that small positive studies are more likely to be published than small negative studies. 
Under such circumstances, if one were to remove the small negative studies indicated here by an odds ratio greater than one, the overall estimate of effect may spuriously indicate an odds ratio that is smaller than one, potentially indicating a benefit from an intervention in regards to a specific outcome. The funnel pot would not be symmetric, and this would be an indication for publication bias, leading to downgrading the quality of the evidence and limiting the confidence in the estimate of effect. Depending on the degree of publication bias, one would downgrade by one or two levels. Consider this example. There frequently is a question, how many studies are required to assess publication bias in a funnel plot? Rules of thumb indicate that a minimum of five to 10 studies is required. This example, an early version of a Cochrane systematic review looking at parenteral anticoagulation for prolonging survival in patients with cancer who had no other indication for anticoagulation, shows five randomized controlled trials that appear to be symmetrically distributed around the best estimate of effect, which is a hazard ratio of approximately 0.8. Despite the paucity of studies, one might describe publication bias as undetected and not downgrade the quality of evidence. Now consider this update of the same review. In the update, three additional randomized control trials had been identified. While the overall estimate of effect appears to be closer to a relative risk of one, publication bias could still be judged as undetected, given that there is a nearly symmetrical distribution of the individual trials around the best estimate of effect, which is a relative risk of around 0.9 at this point. Now consider the following classic example. Intravenous magnesium was considered to be beneficial in patients who suffered from acute myocardial infarction. In fact, when systematic reviewers looked at the effects of intravenous magnesium on mortality in trials, they observed the following. Trials indicated largely that there was benefit from administering intravenous magnesium with an approximate odds ratio in a meta-analysis done by Yusuf and colleagues in 1993 of approximately 0.8. However, when carefully looking at the distribution of these studies, it became evident that primarily smaller randomized controlled trials were identified and indicated large benefit leading to the overall estimate of effect. In fact, when investigators conducted a large-scale randomized controlled trial, ISIS-4, published in The Lancet in 1995, they found that there was no benefit from acutely administering IV magnesium in myocardial infarction. Such a funnel plot would be an indicator of publication bias. In fact, here publication bias was confirmed by a later very large randomized controlled trial. There are other examples of a high risk of publication bias. For instance, the systematic review shows that pain was reduced when taking drug A compared to placebo and the systematic review primarily reported on small trials that showed a statistically significant benefit of drug A. And if there's indication that larger trials showed a much smaller benefit that, for instance, was not statistically significant, such a distribution may indicate that smaller studies with smaller or negative effects might have not been published and under those circumstances publication bias may be likely and one would downgrade the quality of evidence because the confidence in the estimate, which is likely overestimated, is reduced. An example comes from a Cochrane systematic review looking at alpha blockers for hypertension. In this systematic review, 10 trials were identified. Although the results were not pooled because of the use of different doses in these various trials, 
the authors concluded that trials must have been completed and provided to the regulators in order for the drug to be approved. Only very few trials were actually found. Many of the doses that have been approved by regulators do not have sufficient published trial evidence to support their use. And for some doses, there were no published data. The authors of this review concluded that publication bias may be likely and one might downgrade the quality of the evidence. A question that is frequently asked is whether publication bias should be suspected when there's only one study. The answer is that publication bias should be always suspected. All that one can do is to say whether it was detected or whether it remains largely undetected. However, typically when only one randomized controlled trial is present, the quality of the body of evidence for a given outcome is likely to be downgraded, for instance, due to the risk of bias, imprecision, or other factors. Publication bias, generally, when there is only one study found, is less of a concern when the search has been conducted well, in particular when a systematic search was actually done to eliminate the risk of not identifying studies. Publication bias based on one study should therefore not be assumed by default. For more information on publication bias, please see the Cochrane Handbook Chapters 10 and 12, the context-specific help section in the Great Profiler software that is freely available for download, or contact support at gradepro.org.